Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. Today, we're going to break down what we saw in Game 3 of the Eastern Conference semifinals between the Brooklyn Nets and the Milwaukee Bucks. And, you know, I want to start off with the Brooklyn Nets offensively. You know, Kevin Durant is their go-to guy, and so is Kyrie Irving. But, you know, in the first half, those two struggled. Kevin Durant, he was 2 for 10. He had 7 points. I don't remember what Kyrie Irving shot from the field and what he finished with in the first half. But, you know, he was very ineffective, I would say. You know, the Brooklyn Nets... Their offense, what I like about it is that, you know, their ball movement is not very complacent. They're not a stagnant offense. They keep, they continue to pass the ball very well. And, you know, they get to, you know, their spots. There's a lot of screen and roll action. And, you know, it that ultimately ends up resulting in an open three-pointer to a guy like Joe Harris. Uh, sometimes Bruce Brown, you know, we don't they don't really trust him from that area on the spot of the floor and everything. But, you know, he's more of a guy that, you know, They put in pick and roll situations, which has actually been very successful and worked out a lot for them throughout this entire season. He's really been, you know, one of their bright spots coming off of the bench. And speaking of the bench, I don't think the bench really showed up tonight. Joe Harris, you know, he couldn't hit a grape in the ocean. Aside from Bruce Brown's, you know, 16 points that he finished with, he did have five fouls defensively. That lets you know that he's playing hard, but he has to play a little bit smarter because, you know, this rotation is already a little bit shortened with James Harden. Jeff Green and, you know, guys like DeAndre Jordan out. So, you know, the Brooklyn Nets, they have to do a better job of playing smarter. But tonight, I just think that, you know, Kevin Durant, with him struggling, going, what, I think 9 of 23, something like that, that really hurt them. You know, this is a game that was still a very winnable game for them. You know, I mean, with KD being inefficient, which is something that, you know, happens every blue moon, you have to be a little bit, you know, you can't get too down on yourself if you're the Brooklyn Nets. And I think they have a good opportunity of coming into game four and coming out of there with a win but i mean greg what do you think that you know the brooklyn nets could have done better in order to come out with a win tonight it was it was hard they really really i didn't think their game plan was really that bad they really they had they got to their spots they just hit work they didn't have a bad they had a bad shooting night 36 percent from the field 25 percent from the three-point line they i mean they got to their spots katie struggled early with getting to the spot and that was kudos to pj tucker with get into his face and get into his presence to not get to his spot but and Kyrie struggled too he can knock down shots either joe harris can knock down shots but i really like one positive i can take away from the brooklyn next offense is bruce brown bruce brown and that small ball lineup him coming off screens and hitting some floaters getting into the lane being that being helping them on the offensive end when they needed it because outside of katie uh, katie and Kyrie. Nobody else was scoring on the Brooklyn Nets, so that production from Bruce Brown was really good in that small ball lineup, and I like it. And it and it, str- and it, it made Milwaukee struggle a lot um, on the defensive end too. But switching over to Milwaukee side, I mean, only two guys showed up tonight: Giannis and Chris Middleton. And they start off the game really good. Got got some transition buckets, got some turnovers early. They were up by 21. Like it looked like they were about to blow the game out of the water, but they just started to become too jump shot happy and I hated it. I hate I hate when they do that. I wanted to see Chris Middleton be the ball handler and Giannis being a screener. I like that duo, the pick and roll action because you have to guard Chris Middleton. He's really good in the mid range and you have to guard Giannis when he rolls to the basket. But they started settling and early in the shot clock started taking contested jump shots and that ultimately showed in the box score. Um, they shot 37% from the field, 19% from the from the three point line. They they could not knock down a, 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 a three-point shot at all in this game and it and it showed and it hurt them a lot and, and, I, and I that was it i think oh go ahead nicely my bad i think some of that has to do with the fact that drew holiday's been playing off ball a lot more yeah, than he needs an, to like yeah that's another thing i don't know why Giannis keeps bringing the ball up we know that he's not really a good dribbler and not really when he's just going to go down to the paint and he's not really looking looking to pass or really setting up the offense it's just it's just I saw a lot of isolation basketball today that I did not like. I wanted to see Drew Holiday create the offense a little bit more. And yeah, and I, I think what you said about Giannis is, I mean, it's 100% spot on. I mean, this is a guy that I've been very critical of in the past when it comes to, you know, his decision making, especially down the stretch. I mean, yeah. 
Throughout the entire series, he's made four three-pointers out of 32. I mean, that is under 10%. You, at some point, it has to resonate in your head that, you know, this obviously isn't working. I would like to see him, you know, master that 15, 16 foot range jump shot, because, you know, if he can shoot like 45% from that area, I think that could really build his confidence, you know, offensively and, Ultimately, it'll help the Milwaukee Bucks win more games because when he's having those inefficient nights from jumps from his uh, jump shooting percentages, it really puts the Milwaukee Bucks in a bind. I mean, and then you kind of have to force Chris Middleton or Drew Holiday make, to make something happen the following possession. And then, you know, obviously it just has not worked the entire postseason, if you ask me. And I just feel like, you know, Drew Holiday has to be more ball dominant in order for this offense to be a little bit more fluid. There's too many possessions where Giannis is just going one-on-one -on -one. and speaking of his one-on-one -on -one situations I actually do think that you know it's a mismatch with Blake Griffin guarding him because oh yeah me too. Blake yeah, Griffin me he's too. I mean he's undersized he doesn't really have the strength to you know really contain Giannis but Giannis he he he, he can he has to make quicker decisions I think one yeah. one thing that you know he does a bad a bad job of is you know just getting the ball and attacking immediately when you're when you're standing at the top of the key and you're not making a decision with within three to four seconds, it allows the Brooklyn Nets defense to not only rest, but, you know, set up their defense. You don't want their defense to be set. They've shown in the second half of this year that, you know, they can actually be an average defensive team in the NBA. And with all that being said, I just feel like the Milwaukee Bucks, they have to make better decisions, better adjustments. They have to get contributions from their role players because we have not seen Bryn Forbes nor Bobby Portis this entire series. And it's kind of awkward given the fact that, you know, those two were very big for them in the previous round. So, I mean, I just don't, I don't know if Milwaukee can really beat this team, man. The only thing yeah. that's really questionable for me is can the Brooklyn Nets win on the road? And they ultimately yeah. probably don't even have to because, you know, if they just win all four games at home, they will still be advancing. Yeah, I totally agree. And another thing I want to point out, and I always give this guy crap, but Chris Middleton played really aggressive. He needs to play like this all the time where he's getting to his spots, getting mismatch i think he i think he has some mismatches on bruce brown they threw joe harris at him they threw at Kyrie at him sometimes but ultimately the second half was mostly bruce brown on him i think that's a winnable matchup for him he should be able to get to his spots that mid-range spot and pull up and hit the hit that hit that mid-range 10 to 15 foot jump shot like i want to see chris middleton get to the line get get to that get to his spot and knock down those shots to help out Giannis when he's struggling from those from the jump shot woes yeah, but I mean, I think it, it makes it a little bit tougher on Middleton when, you know, the offense is very stagnant and you just got a bunch yeah. of guys standing on the perimeter. It makes it, once again, it makes it a lot easier for the Brooklyn Nets defensively, you know, come up with rebounds and everything. And they are also killing them on the glass somewhat in the uh, first half, I would say, at, at least on the offensive glass if you're the Brooklyn Nets, you know what I mean? I thought yeah. Lopez, you know, he needed a little bit more help down there. Once again, Bobby Portis, he didn't really show up tonight, but... If you're the Milwaukee Bucks and you score 86 points at home and you barely come out of there with a win in a nail biter. That's concerning. Yep. That's concerning for me. With no Harden, that's concerning for me. But we, we yeah, you can't have that. You can't let that happen for real. You cannot you got you cannot let that happen at all. But I, I, I mean only go ahead, nicely. I think some adjustments that they need to make in the following matchup is they need to they just have to once again they have to have Drew Holiday be more ball dominant. Same thing with Chris Middleton. But Giannis, if you're going to allow him to, you know, play one on one basketball, it has to be in certain areas of the game, in certain moments, you know, understanding time and score, because it can't it can't just be, you know, a random possession where, you know, he's just pulling up for three in transition. Once you, once again, that is not his game. That's not what he's best at. He's best at getting in the rim and playing towards the restricted area. But I mean, with all that being said, I don't know if Milwaukee can actually beat Brooklyn, man. They, they, yeah, there's too many concerns for me. There's, they don't really have a, I mean, Chris Middleton, he's a great number two option, but he's, he's shown me too many times that, you know, he can go missing. And, yeah. and that's also the same thing with their superstar player in Giannis Antetokounmpo. So, I mean, I just don't know if I have much faith in the Milwaukee Bucks. Really, it's the Brooklyn Nets series to lose, even without James Harden. And I do think that it's actually kind of crazy that people think that the Nets can't win without Harden because I actually thought the roster was much better built before he even got to Brooklyn. I know it's a little bit more revamped now, but these guys, their small ball lineup has been very effective the entire very year um, with yeah. Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden in and, out of the, in and out of the lineup. So, I mean, there are a few bright spots for the Brooklyn Nets, but I mean, Ultimately, it comes down to, you know, their role players playing their role, Kevin Durant being Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving, you know, contributing as well.
Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I think some adjustments that the Nets continue to do, make Giannis, make Giannis play, make, make him take tough, tough shots, force him to shoot that three, and they can definitely come out with a W. But an, an, another thing that I have to point out too, Giannis' free throw is way too long. I mean, it's ridiculous why he keeps going over the 10 second mark and he keeps missing crucial crucial free throws so he needs to really focus up at the line and really knock those those free throws because those are hurting his team yeah i think he's a little bit overly conscious like yeah you want to take your time when you're shooting your free throws and everything but exactly. it can hurt you to a certain degree because you get to overthinking and you know especially when you know people are drawing a lot of attention to your free throw taking too much time i think it can hurt the milwaukee bucks and Giannis's confidence overall i totally agree but let us know what you guys think the Milwaukee Bucks need to do in game four in order to tie this series up. And let us know what you think the Brooklyn Nets need to do in order to get a road win, a crucial one, and head back to Brooklyn up 3-0, 3-1. But aside that, it's your boy, Nicey Chungabini. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King, and we out. We out.